Hey everybody, welcome to episode 20. We're going to start doing, putting this radio together finally. So let me show you where I am. So you'll see I've cut the hole here for the electrolytic. And I put some uh, liquid tape on there, by the way, just to keep the uh, edges covered. And this is the electrolytic cap. If you remember, it's a 50-50. And we've got two 50s here, and then this is our ground. And the way this is going to work is it's going to come down here, just like that. And then on the bottom side, you're going to have your, ter your terminals there. And I've also got the liquid tape there so I don't hit any of the sides. And I'll position this thing so it's more in the center. Also looking at the bottom, you'll see that I've dry fitted one of the new tube sockets right there. Okay, I have a quarter inch um, screws coming today so I'm going to take these screws out and replace them. But basically uh, that's what the tube sockets look like. And there's a shield that goes over them like that. Keeps out the noise. So that's what they're going to look like when they're done. It's going to look real good. And with the cap on top, the radio is going to look good. So today we're going to mount the rest of the tube sockets. I'm also going to replace this um, this cap right here which is this one and it's a 5600 picofarad 500 volt right there we're going to replace that we're also going to replace this this one right here which is 1.5 pico it's 100 volt and uh and that's what we're going to do we're going to start putting this thing together from a documentation perspective, I have my schematic all ready to go and I have my orange marker and as I do it I'm going to mark it off. I've also, um, this may be useful for some of you who try to do one of these, I've marked off the terminals, the correct terminals on the cans underneath. Right? And just to give you a point of reference, I'm talking about these terminals here. The terminals that go to these cans. So, looking at the chassis this way, which is how I have it drawn, for example, on this top one, I know that 1 and 3 are there, okay? And the bottom is 2 and 4. And if I go up here to the schematic, look right here, you see there's 1, 2, 3, and 4, okay? So I know where my connections are going to be. I'm going to have to do the same thing with these terminals, uh, with these coils, I'm sorry, right here and right here. And under the radio, that's the coils that I'm talking about here and here. So I'll mark those off, make sure I have the right ones identified, and uh, then I'll be able to easily put this thing back together with no problems. As you know, sometimes when you work on this stuff, you shouldn't be doing things, and you do, and I did. When I was cleaning off these terminals, for this coil right here this one was very weak and as I took my solder sucker just popped right off now luckily inside the coil let's see if we can get in there there's a rivet so all I did was I took a piece of hookup wire bent it into that shape and soldered it in didn't melt anything it's all good all my connectivity is there I've tested it so I have a brand new terminal strip here to mount things to. The rest of them were fine. That particular one was weak, so that was, that's fine. So I'm going to continue working on this, and I'll come back when I have uh, a little more progress done. The plan for today is going to be to wire all the filaments and test it and go, and go from there. All right, I'll be back. Okay, just some progress. All of our tube sockets are mounted, and um, I've got these covers on. Some of you who have never worked on maybe a guitar amplifier may not have seen some of this before. So the, there's a can cover, and there's a spring inside, like so. And when you put it over the tube, it actually pushes down on the tube and makes sure that the tube stays seated, which is good. And then, of course, it's a shield as well. So all of those are in. I want to show you what I use to secure them. So I used a 440 quarter-inch hex head nut screw, I mean, like so. I don't know if we're getting this here, if it's focused, let's see. So it's a hex head, it's a quarter inch, and it's a 440th um, thread instead of a 32. 
That's all I could find. And then underneath, oh by the way, I do have this cap mounted as well. If you look on the bottom side, you'll see here, I've got the uh, all, the, all the tube sockets now down. Those screws lengths are perfect. Quarter inch works great. And, uh, and everything is here. So the next step is going to be to bend these pins out gently so that I, you know, I have room to solder. Um, you know, these ceramic uh, sockets are not always the best, honestly. Um, Got to be really careful with those things. But um, that's going to be the plan now. So I'm going to start wiring my filaments, okay? And uh, we'll come back and give you an update when that's ready, okay? And there's my, uh, there's my electrolytic. We're going to, of course, put some heat shrink tube over these when we put the wires on there, just, just to protect it, make sure nothing hits the chassis. And, of course, I do have my, um, my power cord now back in. And what I'm going to do here, let me pull the shot back so I can explain. So, um, if you remember, when I was going through this, I, the schematic calls for a 47 ohm resistor, which is right here. And if you recall, I put another, an extra resistor in there, and I remember JP said, hey, wait a minute, you know, you don't have any load on that thing, so you really shouldn't do that yet. Well, here's something that I didn't think about during that interchange. This diode right here was actually a selenium rectifier. So, because it's been placed with a modern day diode, I do need to add more resistance. Right? We know that as a general rule. When I opened up the radio when I first got it, there was a 47 ohm resistor and a 3.3 ohm resistor. Okay? What I'm going to put in here is 53 ohms. That should be more than enough, and I'll, I'll check my voltages. If I have to go lower, I'll do that. But I'm going to use the, um, the ones that mount on the chassis, so uh, that'll keep it nice and out of the way. I don't have to worry about big resistors hanging around here, so I'm going to mount them directly to the chassis. So that's how that's going to work. And then, of course, I have the uh, the diode right here that goes right there, and then I'll have a wire that comes off here and goes to this terminal strip, and this will be the wires that go to the uh, to the resistor. So that's the layout, and we're going to try to keep this area as uncluttered as possible. That's the plan. I've also installed this resistor here, uh, capacitor, right here, and that's the 1.5 picofarad cap. And I've installed this 5600 pico um, that I showed you, and that goes to, uh, to ground. So I haven't done that yet. It goes to, to um, yeah, to ground. So that's the plan. All right, um, I'll be back. Okay, let me show you where I am at the moment. So I've started wiring up the uh, filament string. And um, I'll show you this in a second on the chassis, but I've got uh, a wire that will go to this power supply section when it's done. It comes to pin 7 of V4, and V4 is the 3, feet, three V4 output tube. And then I have a, uh, a 1.5K resistor going from pin 5. Remember, this is a, um, uh, what do you call it, dual, dual tube. So it's got center tap, that's what I'm trying to say. <coughs> so that's why there's 6.8 volts coming in. And it's a three volt tube. So there's a resistor going from pin five, which will go to the uh, floating ground. And then I have a, a resistor coming off of pin one, which goes to a 1K resistor, which again goes to floating ground. What I don't have yet is that 2.2 ohm uh, wire round resistor to put in here. And I haven't connected the, uh, the 400 um, microfarad electrolytic, which goes to pin seven of V2, which is the 1U4. Just continuing along the path here, I have one and four tied together with a 0.25 capacitor, which goes to floating ground, to pin seven. I have a 1K, uh, I have tied together one and five, and a 1K resistor goes to the floating ground. Then I have a wire that goes to seven, and then one which will go to floating ground as well. Now, if you take a look at what I've done here, I want to explain a few things. So the green wires are all going to be filament, all right? They're all going to be tucked together tie wrapped neatly when I'm done uh, and keep them keep them out of the way low to the chassis so I'm going to start here with the with the one R5 tube um, you could see here maybe I can zoom in a little bit okay now you can see I have uh, pins one and five tied together all right and there's a resistor off of pin one and if we take a look at pin one right here 
one and five are tied together, okay? And um, and there's a resistor that uh, actually belongs on, if we come over here, this is the, the 1K resistor that connects to one and five. But if you look over here again, you'll see that coming off of this 1-5 string, there's also a 100K resistor that attaches here. So, how did I address that? Right here. I left a piece of hookup wire, soldered to pin 1, right here. And when I'm ready to put in that 100K resistor, I have a connection point. I don't have to disturb the tube sockets. And I'll simply just do the coil method and attach it right there. So that's the, uh, that's the plan around that. And then you'll see I have the wires running across. Uh, they, one comes over to the uh, 1U4 tube, and again, pins 1 and 5 are, oop, can't see that, pins 1 and 5 are tied together, and here's the point .25 cap, and again, I left a piece of hookup wire here, because there's another connection that goes to pin 1 of that tube. So I'm, uh, I'm taking my time, and I'm going slow, and I'm trying to plan ahead a little bit, so I don't have to have, uh, keep disturbing those tube sockets. I want to do them once and not do them again. So, uh, so that's the plan, we're going to go nice and slow. Um, this resistor right here is a uh, 1K resistor uh, that goes to pin 1 of the 3V4 tube. And I'm going to use pin 4 of this tube as a common connection point for floating ground. So that's why it's connected there. So that's, that's where we are. I've also got a piece of hookup wire here, which is going to be connected to the floating ground. All right, pin 1 of this, uh, of this V3 tube which is the uh, 1U5, requires that pin 1 goes to ground. And I can show you that here if you want to see it. Right here. Pin 1 goes to floating ground. So we're taking our time, very slowly, and uh, we're going to continue. Uh, I do need that 2.2 uh, ohm resistor, which was going to go from pin 1 here all the way over here. That's going to take place of that uh, filter choke inductor that we were talking about. Then I have some .01s here, which are going to take the place of this component, and there's one more that goes here. So, uh, still going along steady. So I'm going to put this video up now, because there's really not much more I'm going to show you here. You know how to solder. So, um, as I make progress, I'll come back and, and show you in the next episode. So, that's it. Everybody have a great day.